Scope layer functionality continues to grow in 3D Coat 4.9, and one of the most important recent feature additions is the compatibility of scope layers with the multi-resolution proxy system. If you're coming from another sculpting application, you are probably familiar with their implementation of subdivision levels. In 3D Coat, the approach is somewhat different, even though it accomplishes the same task. As you are working through the various stages of a sculpt, you may find yourself at a point where you are working on an extremely dense mesh and you need to use tools that work best with lower subdivision levels. For example, using the move tool with a really large brush. Or perhaps you want to use the pose tool in order to reshape or modify the silhouette of your model. Before 4.9.06, if I were to switch to a lower resolution proxy, the scope layer information I have on these layers would essentially be baked into the currently selected mesh. So when I came back out of the proxy mode, these would essentially be blank layers. I could no longer go back and edit them. As you can see here, when I hide this layer, I can see the changes made to it. Okay, and you can also scrub the depth slider to see the changes interactively. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this topmost sculpt layer because it has very little edits made to it. I could create a new one just for working in proxy mode, and that's always a good idea. But let's say I want to repose this character. I would want to step down to a lower resolution version, so I will choose either decimate or reduction. In this case, I'm going to choose reduction. The difference is, as you may already know, decimate is going to try and optimize the model, leaving you with higher levels of polygonal density in the areas where it deems it is necessary. For example, in order to keep sharp creases or detailed areas of a model, it will give you higher levels of polygonal density in other areas like the chest region or maybe the thigh region here or maybe on the side of the head, then the polygonal density is going to be much lighter. For that reason, decimation is going to take a bit longer to calculate. I will go ahead and drag my slider to the left. The further I go to the left, the more it's going to be reduced. For the sake of reference, you can look at the bottom center of the UI at the status bar to see the poly count of the currently selected layer. When I drag my slider just below my cursor, I can see a preview of the estimated poly count should I click the cache to disk icon. I'll go ahead and click on that and it switches me to proxy mode. At this point, I can now drag a slider to another resolution level if I need. That way I don't have to uncache, make the change, and then cache again. So I'm at 1 million. If I zoom in, and turn wireframe on, I can see it's much lower resolution here. With reduction, it's a uniform polygon distribution. That's one reason why it's a bit faster. Yeah, let's say I want to tweak the thumb region here. I can select the pose tool. I'll use the line selection method. Click my first point, drag to my second point. And I may want to hide the gizmo temporarily. And also, I'm going to switch to Paint Select. Go to something like a freeform lasso. And I also want to make sure Ignore Back Faces is unchecked because I want to be able to select all the way through. I'll hold down the Control key to invert because I don't want to select, I want to actually deselect. So I'll just select this area. Now, I can uh, smooth the selection. Unhide the gizmo. I can hold down the shift key. And that lets me move the gizmo in place. I need. I could choose two main axis and it would snap to the selection, but because I have it in symmetry, I need to manually position it. Okay. Um, let's tweak it just a bit more here, holding the shift key. Okay. So let's go ahead now and rotate that. As 
as you can see, as I rotate over here, the same thing's being applied over there. So I'll undo and hold the shift key and I'm going to change my pivot point and rotate that thumb up just a bit. All right, and uh, let's clear the selection. May also want to tweak the calf region here as well. I can use something like the move tool. And I'll use a soft brush alpha. You can hold the control key so it's pulling just along the normals. Hold on the control key and just nudge that just a slight bit. Okay, and maybe make some more adjustments here in the trap region. All right, so now let's go ahead and click the cache to disk icon. We could click it here or up here on the layer. That's going to send me back to the original state of the model, but translate the changes I made in proxy mode. So now I can hide and unhide those changes. And I can also hide the other sculpt layers and see that they were indeed intact as well. Okay, that's a quick look at using sculpt layer compatibility with proxy mode in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.